Now let's move on to the next example. So this is an exercise. Write a client program that enters some student. So you need to access a student class which have two attributes. So you can see here the attributes are name and GPA. So GPA is grade performance average and written the maximum and the average of GPA from all objects. So for example, let me enter the number of students. So I enter three. So I will get the student one name. It is Bob and student one GPA. It is 2.5. And then I will have another student named Chloe and the student GPA is 3.0. I have another student named David, and then the student GPA is 3.1. Okay. And then I can check what is the maximum among those three students. 2.5, 3.0, and 3.1. So the maximum is 3.1. Then I can say that the student with the best GPA is David. And then the average GPA is 2.86. How can we get this value? It is 2.5 plus 3.0 plus 3.1. And then we will divide with 3. Then we will get this value. So I give you the class diagram. In the class diagram, I show you that there are two data, which is named and GPA. And then I will have a constructor. So the constructor will give you two attributes as name, student name and GPA. And then you will get the name, you will get the GPA, you will set the name, and then you will set the GPA. So if you want to give, if you want to make another function, yeah, it's also here. So let's make one by one. I think I will just make the student class. So you can try it together with me. Let me make a new file, student. Okay, and then I will make the class student. So the class student, the first is the constructor. Okay, the constructor means I have the def, underbar, underbar, init, underbar, underbar, and then I need to define the self parameter. And then after this, I will have two variables, which is name and GPA. So after I have the name and GPA, I need to define the variable in this class. So I will have name. I use two underbar. Why? Because it is private. So I want to make this variable as a private. Then the underbar underbar name will be the same with the name, and the underbar underbar GPA will be the same with the GPA. And then I will make another 
Gaussian because in this class diagram we have one, two, three, four. Okay. So I will just define get name and then it will return the value. So I will return the name. Then I can just mention the cell dot name. And then I have another function which is get GPA. So I can define the self and then I return self dot underbar underbar gb. <clears throat> and then I will have another function to set the name. What is the set name? If you look at this one, set name, it means a function to set the current object name. So I can just say that set name. So the first parameter is self, and then I have name to indicate the input. So I can define the self underbar name will be equal to name. And then I have step set GPA. Again, there is one parameter which is self, and then I define the GPA. So I can assign the self other bar GPA equals to GPA. <coughs> so this will be the basic student class based on this diagram. Okay, I hope that you can understand this one. After I have the student class, so let's try to make the client program. Okay. So the client program, you can generate any name. For example, I'm going to make a new name, test student. Okay, so let me try to write one by one so you know the step. So from student, it means from the student.py, I'm going to import the student class. Okay. After I get the student class, let me define the main function. So I will call later the main function here. So what is the content of the main function? As you can see here, first I would like to know how many students that will be the input. Then let me make a new variable num and then let's make it as an integer and input from the user how many students so after i have the input so i will assign the number of students it will be known what is known So let's say if I want to have non multiply by num. Now let's see what is the result. Num of two. Okay. If I mention there are three students, then it will create non, non, non for three times. So that's the meaning by non multiply by num. If I write again, how many students? Five. Then it will create non, 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 non for five times. So it means I will create a list. And the first list is non, it means nothing, for the number of the students. So if the number of students is seven, then that would be seven. 
stuff, I want to make two additional variables. So total, let's say it is zero. And then I will make another variable, which is index, it is zero. So let's make a maximum value, which is zero. Okay. Or yeah, you can define the maximum value is a particular number, but okay, let me start with you. So I want to make this as a loop because as I mentioned in the problem, there will be three students. Then it means I will do loop for three times. Then I can just make for i in trains according to the number. So if I have three students, then it will be a loop for three times. So the data will be name and GP. So I can just make the input name. And because name is a string, then I can just directly use input. Input the name. And then for the GPA, let's consider it as a number and I can just make it as a float. Input GPA. After I input the name, after I input the GPA, now I would like to update the student. So I have the student, number of students. It is a list. And if I have five students, then there will be five nodes. So I would like to assign every of this variable. So the first I, it will be the element or it will be the object of the student. So the first element or the index zero, it will be the student. And I'm going to input the name and the GP. Okay. So let me just do until this part and then let's see the result first. Okay, what happened if I input two students? So how many students do I want to input? Let's say two. Input the name, maybe David. And then the GPA maybe 3.5. Input another name, let's say Chloe. And uh, GPA is 2.8. So now you have two objects. The first object is like this one, and the second object is like this one. So why? It's like this. Why it is like this one? Because it is an object. If it is an object, you cannot show directly to the computer and you need to call that object based on the function that you define on the student class. So now it means that every of this have the student object. It means if I want to get the student, I want to get the number of student index zero. Okay. What happened? Let's say I have two, David, and 
and then Chloe, let's say 2.8. So if I want to know the student index zero, again, it is only the object name and this is the memory address in your computer. If I want to know the name of this student, then I can just do with the dot, okay. because it is a student name. Then you can do get name. How many students? I have two students, David, and then I have the 3.5. Let's say Chloe, I have 2.8. Now you will see that the name appears as David because the first student name is David. And I want to get from the student in that zero. I want to know the name. Even though I cannot see the object clearly here, but when I call the function get name, this get name will give you the name of the student. So this get name is from the student class. It is from get name. Now let's say I want to get the GPA of the first student. So student index zero, I want to get the GPA. Again, let's say I have two, and then the first student is David, the GPA is 3.5, and then the second is Chloe, and then the GPA is 2.8. Then, if I go to the index zero, the index zero means the first student, David, and the GPA is 3.5. So if I call the name and I, I call the GPA, then it will show their name and GPA. So let me close this one. What if I change to index one? Then it will show the second data so i can do again how many students let's say two the first is david 3.5 and then i have chloe which is 2.8 and then if i change the index to one then it is the name of chloe and the gpa is 2.8 okay now the problem is, we need to get the maximum of the GPA, and then we want to check the average. So what is the average? The average is the total of all GPA divided by the number of the student. Then I can just make Total will be the total plus GB, okay. and then I will check if the GB is higher than uh, MX. Then let's set the MX will be the GB. Or maybe is if it is easier, we can say the maximum will be the maximum of MX compared to the GPA. So I want to get what is the maximum of MX and GPA. And in this case, I would like to assign the index as I. So I will know that this index is the index where the GPA is the maximum. Okay. So by using this one, I can make the student with 
the best gpa is so i can call the num of skew and the index will be the index where you already assigned the student with that the maximum gpa so i can put this one as index and then as you might know if we just use this one then we cannot see the name in order to show the name then we will need the get name so i would like to get the name of the student with this index and then at the end i want to know the the average of the gpa is something so the something is the total that we already have here divided by the number of the student that you have okay so this is the complete code you can see also in this powerpoint about this code now let me run so how many students okay i have let's say three the first name is david let's say the gpa is 3.5 and then let's put the second student is chloe the gpa is 2.8 and then let's make the third student is bob and then the gpa is 2.9 for example so the student with the best gpa is david why david because the gpa is the maximum and then what is the average of the gpa it is 3.06 so 3.06 is the average from 3.5 plus 2.8 plus 2.9 divided by the number of students. Okay. Now, let's think that uh, I want to give some kind of uh, appreciation to the students who got the excellent GPA. So I make a new function, check GPA. If the GPA is more than 3.5, then let's say, okay, your grade is excellent. But if it is not, then your grid is just general. Okay. Now let's see how we can make this one. You can make it in the client program. You can make it in your class. But let's make it easy. Let's make it in the client program. In the client program, you already have one function, which is main. Now, I would like to have another function, which is check GPA. And then the check GPA, it will be the check for the related GPA, which is about the student TV. Now, I want to make this as the <coughs> problem when it is started or when it is the initial value. So the grid will be empty or nothing. And I would like to check the GPA. If GPA is 3.5, then let's make the grid as 
excellent else the grid is jello so let's return the grid Okay. I can make one new statement in this main function. So I will print. What I will print is num of still the index get name. So what does it mean by this one? index mean the index that we have here so the index is the object index where the student have the maximum gb and then i want to get this or her name after i show the name i would like to mentioned that David Grid is something and this something is related to the check GP. So I can just mention that check GPA and what is the GPA of the person? Because there's there should be one parameter here about the GPA and I want to know the GPA from the maximum student. Then I can call this one and I can just get GPA. So you do not use any variable at this moment. You just use the function. So in this case, I'm using the get name and get GPA from the student class. And I connect those into the other function, which is the check GPA, and we have one parameter. Okay, now if I run this, let's see how many students. So I have three. David is 3.5 and then Chloe, let's say 2.8 and then let's say Bob, okay, 2.9 then the student with the best GPA is David. The average of GPA is 3.0 something something. David grade is general. Oh, why? Why David grade is general? Because, yeah, that's right. Because the GPA is higher than 3.5. And 3.5 is not higher than 3.5. Then that's why the grade is general. Okay. So I will revisit the class diagram. Whenever we have the problem about the class, so we will see this kind of diagram and this diagram contains at least three parts the first is the class name the second part is the data fields or the data members and the last box it contains the constructor and methods or function and then here we have the object 
if it is the circle one then it is based on the class circle if it is circle two it is based on the class circle it is another object circle three it is based on the class circle and then we can see that the data it is the radius equals to one the radius equals to 25 the radius equals to 125 So let's try to make that class. Okay, then let me make one by one so you can understand how to create this object. I have the class circle. So based on this one, I have the class circle and I have one data member which is radius and then I have one constructor and I have one method which is get array. So we can look at this one. So this is the development of the previous class diagram. Let's say I'm importing one function from the map. So I'm going to do the class circle. It is a new class. And then I would like to make a new constructor in it. And I have one parameter which is self. And let's assume that the radius has a default value as one. So I do not want to define any zero because if it is zero, then any zero multiply with another value will be zero. So let's have the radius equals to one. So I can make one variable, which is radius. It will be the value of the radius. So this is the constructor. I can modify this one. Let's say I have the get area. Okay. In this example, I have the constructor and the area function. So the area function, I can say it is the self the radius multiply by the self dot radius multiply by the map dot type okay. so i am just using the pi from the map function okay let me just give these two function so if you want to have another function like this one, get radius, it means you want to get the radius value. Or if you want to calculate the perimeter, then this is the formula. I can make the function, I can make the main function in different Or I can also make the main function in the same part. Okay, let me make the main function in the same part. So I have the circle one. Let's say the circle one, I would like to define as the radius equal to one. Then if I want to define radius equal to one, why it is empty? Because the default value here is one. So if I have no information here, then the radius will be one. Now I have the C2. 
it will be a circle and I want to define the radius is 25 and then I have another circle and I want to set the radius equals to 125 let me print I want to know the area of the circle 1 I want to know also the area of the circle 2 and I also want to know the area of the circle 3. Then let me do this main function. Okay. The first circle radius is 1. 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 3.40. Then the result will be 3.40. The second circle is 25. So 25 multiplied by 25 multiplied by 3.40 is zero. And the third circle is 125. So 125 multiplied by 125 multiplied by 3.40. And this is zero. So it depends on you whether you want to create another function or not. Okay. So let's say if I want to make another function def get radius. So if I call this function, I want to get the value of the radius. So I can return self underbar underbar radius. Yeah, you can make your pipi of this one. So you can see from the structure. So the first structure, you have radius one, and then you have the get radius, which is the function to get the radius value, and then get area, which is the value of this value. Okay. And then you will see that you have a variable which is radius and this radius is private because we use the double underbar. Okay. In Gurum, when I give you assignment to create this kind of object, you need to make it in one file. Okay, so you cannot make two files. So I give you this example. In this case, I have the circle class and I want to access this circle class from the main function that I define below the class. So you can make same like this. Okay, then this is the end of the object oriented programming. You will learn about the object, which is about the class and the fields. You will learn about the object behavior, methods, or the functions, and you learn about the constructor. So I give you some examples about object oriented programming, and I hope that you can understand this clearly. And next week we will do more complicated programming with GUI. So make sure that you can follow step by step from the GUI because if you miss one, then you cannot do well on the team project. And for the team project, 